What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher. Today, we're back on the Model A. Last week, we got the hood done. Really happy with how that came out. We uh, made a fence for the bead roller. We were able to, you know, make some uh, bead roll, um, like custom dies, so that we could get the perfect bead roll on the side of that hood. Now, some of you guys have already been asking in the comments, what are we gonna do about this bead? It just stops here and it doesn't, doesn't look right. It doesn't look right that it just stops there. Well, I've been kind of chewing on it for a bit and originally I was thinking about making just a point in this bead to finish it off and we could do that pretty simply. But I think we're gonna go a little bit further and try and think up a cool way to end it that sort of makes it seem a little more luxurious. Like, anyway, we're gonna figure this one out. I'm really excited to make that little form and weld that piece in there, show you guys how to do it with pretty simple tools. So let's get into the video. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. Let's do it. Okay, so I don't know if you guys are picking up what I'm putting down, but I'm looking at the lines of the Zephyr and I'm taking design cues from the Zephyr. If you have not guessed when I was talking about splitting the grill and putting a split windshield on this car. And um, basically I love the lines on the Zephyr and it's a little bit more luxurious of a car. They spent a little bit more time on design. So when I look at this car, this is what I'm thinking. We've got these beautiful beads that are swooping. They're not just straight beads, right? It's not like an earlier car in the 20s would have been a little bit straighter beads and a little bit less, you know, deluxe. So all these design features like this, that's what I'm looking at and sort of taking my inspiration from, as well as the Zephyr. I'm gonna do a Zephyr style dash in this car. We're gonna do a split windshield, which is not a Zephyr thing, but it should have been, and a split grill. So I want to make a special end that kind of has some, you know, design to it. Like this is, this is what I'm thinking. So I've got an idea in my head, what's gonna look good. I'm just gonna sort of draw it on there and see if I like it. And then we're gonna talk about how we're gonna make that happen. Okay, this is pretty fun, making a little design feature. You know, it kind of changes the look of the car a little bit. So this is what I was talking about is the Lincoln Zephyr logo. Um, you know, like 1939, it was kind of like the peak of aerodynamic looking cars, really. I, you know, Art Deco, aerodynamic type of stuff. But that I think is a little bit too direct. You could do that and it would look cool, but I don't want to copy the exact shape. I just want to kind of give the feeling of, you know, extra little luxury design features, right? So I'm thinking something kind of, it comes to a point at the bottom line and then is that aerodynamic shape coming back and then maybe a slight reverse like this. Maybe a little bit pointier. some variation of that where it kind of picks up on these lines of the car and then that little back return sort of reminds me of the the back of the car like where it swoops around and the cowl section and anyway something like that i might play with it a little bit more to refine it and then we're going to make this hammer form
All right, so I've matched up these two guys. You can kind of imagine what these will be for. These are our dies. So we're gonna have to shape these to be the shape that we want depressed into the back side of our sheet metal. So we're gonna use 18 gauge for the hammer form. The reason I made two is because we need a left and a right. And we're gonna be welding a bar on here so that we can hit it with a hammer to depress this into the metal. So now what we've got to do with these plates is create a clamp essentially that will have this in a negative cut out of it. So we'll be able to stick our sheet metal on here. We'll be able to put these together. You can either clamp them, you could drill holes and put bolts through them to hold the, the two plates together. And then with this window cut out, this will set in there and then we'll be able to hammer it down into the next piece. Now, keep in mind our, we'll call this the, the male part of our jig. The female side doesn't actually have to have any shape to it. It just needs the outline. This outline is all that needs to be cut into this plate. So I'm gonna do that now. Like you saw, you can do this with all, you know, hand tools. We're using grinders, files, um, sanders, that kind of thing. So you can do it with very simple tools. I'm gonna show you a cool tool that I've acquired that uh, is gonna help me do this portion of it because I've already showed you the easy way, um, or not the easy way, the hard way, but I'm gonna um, use a die filer. I'll just quickly show you what that machine looks like. I know I say all with simple tools, but you get the idea. I'm gonna cheat a little bit and use this guy. If you haven't seen one of these before, it's literally a power filer. It's got all these different files. I found this uh, on Marketplace. This is about 100 years old or close to it. And you basically clamp your file in here and it grabs it at the top and then it just goes up and down. And uh, it's got this little foot to hold the plate and it actually cuts with the file nice and straight. It's actually uh, like a tool and die makers die filer. So we're making dies, exactly what we're doing today. So yeah, I'm gonna cheat using that, but obviously you guys know excuses. You can do this with just a regular file. I'm gonna use the die filer today though. All right, just got these pieces knocked out here. Um, I ended up using the torch to just get as close as I could. Another way you could do this is um, you could use an angle grinder and then also um, what some guys do and I've done in the past is you drill a whole bunch of tiny holes on, on the radiuses or the hard to get areas. And if you drill a whole bunch of holes next to each other and then angle grind what you can get at, then you could knock that out and you'd be close enough so that you could be where we are at now where now we can kind of file to fit. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna uh, clean these up a little bit. I'm gonna stack them one on top of another and I might just tack them together to hold them totally square with each other. And then I'm gonna file the rest of that on the die filer machine.
Well, the die filer is sweet. I got a bit of material to remove here that I've got this super sharp bastard file that just eats. So it's gonna be a lot faster than going right to the die filer. All right, so the form is coming along pretty good. We've got these two pieces welded together. I did have to true them up a little bit more to get them to fit really nice. They drop in there. You could you could get even better than that, but honestly, like you probably don't even need to go this far. You won't notice any anything uh, any indiscrepancies smaller than that for sure. The crucial point right now, I'm trying to think ahead as to like what's going to happen when we do this. Because this end is open, I left it open because it's easier to, to make this cut. But I worry that if we're hammering our die into here and hitting it, is it gonna want to spread that apart? I think yes. So in case that is going to happen, I'm gonna weld these ends closed. These are just off cuts from when we made these pieces, cutting it with the saw. So I'm just gonna weld those to hold that measurement. That measurement's very crucial because this female side is going to be the outside edge of the bead roll. Okay, so like that sharp edge that you see here and here, that is essentially this edge. So that's how nice the edge has to be. You want it to be sharp so that you get that still and how accurate it is to your edge of the bead roll is also important. I've got that pretty good. And that's why I don't want it to change. Like if we make one side and then it gets wider and we make the other side, well, they're not gonna be the same. So we're gonna have to definitely weld that piece on the end to close it. But we are about ready to shape our forms. We're gonna weld those edges on there next. And then I'm also going to split this apart because this is two of them welded together. And we are going to have a look at radiusing this. What I'm going to do to know what kind of radius to run is I'm going to make myself just a little paper gauge and I'm going to check it with the bead roll because this bead roll is the inside of that sheet metal. 
So I'm gonna make another gauge. I lost the other one, or it's probably just not any good, not any good anymore, but find out what curve this is, and that's the radius that I'm going to want to grind the edge of this to. It'll be a full radius right here, but then it'll have like a little bit of a flat spot in the middle and have the same radius around here. So we're gonna be able to shape that. You can kind of do whatever you want in here, make it however you want, but um, that's how I'm gonna shape mine, is I'm gonna use that same radius as a gauge and try and duplicate that radius all the way around this form the die that will press into there. All right, we're looking pretty good now. We got uh, 
these two pieces welded onto little stands. I think that's gonna help not only strengthen the face of the die, but give us something to hammer on. Now we've finished off this piece with a little bit of flat bar on both sides. Um, I thought what a great spot to add a couple of locator bolts. You might think that maybe those bolts are clamping the sheet metal in there. I don't think they're quite strong enough and I don't wanna take the chance. So these I've put in there as more locators so that when we bolt the pieces on, it just locates it and our sheet metal will sit inside here so there won't be any bolt holes in our actual sheet metal. And now we've got two nice faces that I can actually clamp that to something that we can hammer on. That's, that's kind of the main reason we put the bolts in is just, just to align both sides. This is a, a reversible die now. So um, next up is grinding this and I just want to talk a little bit about it. Right now they fit really, really good. They don't need to fit that good. Pro the outside profile of this is quite crucial. Like I said, it's got to match the bead. That's what the sharp line that you're going to be seeing in the sheet metal is going to be coming from. So that, that is important. This, however, most of it is not actually that important. I know that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but what I'm trying to say is that like, if you had a little gouge in this, or if it wasn't polished perfectly, or, or um, if it had a little bit of a waver in it, you really wouldn't see it that much because it's pushing on the back side of the sheet metal. So none of that is going to transfer to the exterior side of it. Um, it's just going to form kind of around it slowly and, uh, and with a lot of pressure. So it's not going to fill in any real inconsistencies. Um, you also need room for the thickness of the material in the die set. So for it to be that sharp, right now we could literally punch it and probably punch out that profile. It wouldn't last very long because this isn't hardened tool steel, but that's how tight it is fitting right now. So we do need to grind a bit of extra off of this to make sure that we're not punching out our die. We're just forming that shape into it. Um, as well as it's worth noting that this is quarter inch thick material. The, this plate is quarter inch thick material and the depth of our bead roll is only 3 16 which means that we'll have to restrict the stroke of this die set to 3 16 of an inch so that we don't have too much, too proud of a bead. Um, the way I'll probably do that is I'll probably just cut a little piece of scrap steel that's 16 of an inch thick, like, uh, you know, 16 gauge is close enough. And we'll try putting a piece in the bottom of the die for when we press it. And then that way it will restrict the stroke a little bit. This could take multiple tries. We're, we're making a new die set, so I would be surprised if we nailed it on the first one. So we'll be able to tune it up as we go. The main thing that I want to like make sure that I do is make sure that the end of this, I want to make sure that the end of this die looks exactly like the profile of the bead roll die because that is what it's going to be mating up to. So if I was able to nail it perfect and get the same profile as the bead roll die in the end of each of these dies, that means that when we punch our piece, it will weld up perfect and you know the weld will disappear and it will be, it will be nice. So those are things I'm thinking about right now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and probably start with just a fat chamfer on the whole thing. I feel like if I remove most of the material and cut off this edge with a big chamfer, that I'll be able to make sure that it's relatively even it'll be easy to see and once that big chamfer's gone you know it'll be on a 45 degree and then i'll go to a 22 degree and we'll just start rounding it like that and just trying to be as consistent as possible lots of grinding to go
All right, so we've got these things ground down a bit. This is just the first try. We might have to come back to this. I ground right down the full depth of the quarter inch in hopes that that amount extra that we're gonna restrict the stroke will allow for the sheet metal to pass through and not shear it. But that is kind of my number one concern is I think that, well, we have, we have the possibility that it's just too tight still. But um, I didn't end up using this gauge to, to watch the edges uh, because I ended up kind of just going with the flow here. I just went free balling it here. This is the only thing I really care about is, is where it's gonna match the other bead. I think this, I just wanted to grind it till it looked nice. So I, I definitely took a little bit more material off here and kind of made it a shallower taper rather than have this, you know, there would end up being a flat spot right here if we just kept that radius all the way around. Do you understand how that would go? Anyway, that's why I did that. I think it'll look cool, but uh, excited to try it. I'm gonna cut out a couple pieces of sheet metal right now and get them clamped into our jig. And, uh, and we're gonna give this thing a go. Before I forget, everybody's gonna ask. These are Cubitron 3M Rolock discs. Cubitron is uh, C-U-B-I-T-R-O-N. Cubitron. Yep, I think so. Anyway, <laughs> uh, that's all I'm using, just a cheap grinder. I've got uh, just a grinding disc to rough it out in the beginning. I went 36 grit on here, then 80 grit on here, and then this is just 80 grit. Um, ooh, I kind of destroyed that pad a little bit, but uh, 80 grit on a DA. That's all I use to grind that down. Hey, that went really well, I think. I mean, we don't know yet. We haven't cracked it open. 
But let's have a look. It actually didn't take as much force as I anticipated. I thought I'd have to uh, bang on it a little bit harder. It's possible that the edges could have had a little bit of a shearing effect because of how tight it is, but we'll know in a second here. It's actually pretty dang good. I mean, wow. Check that out. He stayed perfectly flat. The outside finish is beautiful. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm surprised and glad that it's not shearing the corners and we're getting nice crisp edges, but we can improve on it for sure. There's right at this point here, it's a little bit shallow. Um, I would like that a little bit more pronounced. It seems like it kind of does that a little bit. So there's a couple ways we could do that is we could hit a little bit harder on this end and maybe that'll take care of it. Or when we pop the die back out, we could, you know, take a, a little bit of a chisel and try and get that point a little bit more proud. The other thing I've noticed, I did just look at this on the car. This is a little bit too deep. So we're going a little bit too deep in this one spot and you can kind of see that it's sort of ramped up a little bit there. So what I'm going to do is probably shave the die down a little bit. And then also we will restrict the stroke a little bit more. Maybe we'll go to a slightly thicker piece of metal or we might just try not to hit it as hard. We've got a lot of pieces to, uh, to try, so I can, I can afford to do a bunch. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make as many as I can and pick the best ones now.
All right. So I just want to talk about the dies a little bit, how we went about going through multiples and kind of tweaking them as we went along. So this was the first one. I was happy with it that it didn't start shearing the sides and, and, uh, and it turned out quite nice, but it was too deep. So I had to adjust the depth on that one to a little bit shallower. So we went a little bit shallower with this. It was still too deep. And uh, this is where we tried using this um, little piece of Delrin. That black chunk is just a, a chunk of Delrin that I grind to different angles if I need it for kind of um, swaging things. So we tried those little points. I wasn't sure if I really liked them. We went again, did another grind and um, tried to press it a little bit shallower. And we did get the shallowness on this one, but um, we didn't have the same kind of shape in the rest of it. So what I ended up doing is this is my initial depth stop when I thought that maybe a 16th of an inch would be enough. And then I went to a 16th of an inch plus a piece of cardboard. It still wasn't enough. So I went to a 16th of an inch plus a piece of cardboard plus a small piece right near the bead because to me it was okay that this was a little bit deeper just because it's an organic shape. But this is the crucial point where the bead meets up to our stamped piece. And then finally, I went a little bit further and did an extra depth here to really shallow it out. And we kind of pressed into this cardboard and it actually put a, um, a pinch in it and it, it made a very nice finish, like no transfer, you know? Um, so anyway, it took six tries to get it to fit perfect. And we kept grinding the die shallower and shallower at the end. Um, closer and closer to what the actual bead roll was. But uh, that's what we ended up with. So lots of, you know, fitting and testing. And then once we got the depth set and the bead matched on the sixth one, we got it. And then I did the same thing to the other die and got it on the first try. So I ended up using seven pieces total. I cut 10, so we had a few extras. Don't uh, be discouraged on something like this because you don't have, you know, the die filer or, or, or whatever. You can use any welder to make your forms. You can, gr I mean, you can grind this out with a die grinder. You could use, you know, a torch initially. You could use, um, like I said, a grinding wheel and then a bunch of drills. There's ways to do it. And I promise I've been doing this for so many years that I did not have these tools that I'm using today, like a TIG welder and, and a die filer and stuff and to do this, but it didn't stop me. So don't let that stop you. You can, whatever way you can figure out to cut out that shape and grind it, it will work. So, um, you know, but obviously the, uh, the nicer you make the dies, the, the closer everything is, the crispier your finished product, but just give it a try. I, I hope you guys really give this a try because it, it's an amazing eye opener as far as shapes that you can make and things you can do. And once you know how to do something like this, you will be able to apply it to so many other different, like it doesn't have to be on a hot rod. I'm babbling on. I love hammer forming. You can tell because <laughs> I use it all the time and I hope that that simplified it and uh, gave you guys some ideas for your own projects. But I wanted to talk about the next video. The next video on this car is going to be a little bit of TIG welding and a little bit of MIG welding. Um, I'm gonna do kind of a bit of a comparison as to why I use one or the other, because I'm not a TIG only shop. I'm not a MIG only shop. I use both. So I'm going to TIG this in and I'm going to MIG weld some other patches on here to, um, to delete this bead and to extend this bead because I'm not able to hammer in behind there, but uh, I'm not going to give too much away. That's going to be the next video. All right. Well, that's where I'm going to end this one. Um, been a super fun video making those little pieces to kind of accentuate the body line on the Model A Roadster. I think it's really neat what you can do with relatively simple tools and hammer forming. It's just one of those things that um, you just do so much with. So um, hopefully you guys got something from this video and maybe you can apply it to your own projects. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. And if there's another way that you might be looking to help support the channel, we are offering memberships. Um, you get a discount code with memberships and you also get a little badge by your name that lets me know that you're a member when I'm going through the comments. You know, some of the, uh, I try to stay up to date with comments on the new videos, you know, for the first solid week, making sure that, uh, that everybody gets their comments read. But 
older videos and stuff that just, I mean, I, I can't answer them all. But um, if you do end up with a badge by your name, I can search older videos quite easily and make sure that all of those comments or questions get answered. So uh, that's just one other way I can give back to you if you guys hit the membership button. Um, it's called the Custom Crew. So if you want to join the Custom Crew, I much appreciate it. Otherwise, everything stays the same. Same free content, same great stuff. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one, everybody. Thanks a lot. Cheers.